This is the third lecture for the animal chiropractic class for the uh, ethics and legal considerations part. In this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about the licensing rules. I'm going to give you a quick overview and, and discussion about the rules and what they should be trying to do. Now, let me start by explaining how complicated this question is. Uh, we have 50 different states. Each state has its own statutes and its own rules and there's no real consistency with respect to animal chiropractic between those states. So it makes it a very difficult or challenge for me anyway to explain this in a way that makes sense. But part of the reason I want you to understand that is so that you know that when you go out to practice, when you've complete this program, be certain that you take a few, not more than a few minutes, be sure you take some time to review your state's rules, make sure you understand your state's rules with respect to animal chiropractic, and make sure you're following them very carefully. Uh, every state's going to have its own set of rules for veterinarians, uh, the kind of care they can provide, what's covered by their license, uh, and the kind of supervision they have to provide when they're asking someone else to provide care under their license. Every state's going to have its own set of rules and regulations and statutes about chiropractors. If you become aware of any statutes or rules that I've referred to in these lectures that are out of date, uh, please let me know. I try to keep an eye on changes to them, but with the number of states and the variety of different places, the way they're organized, I may miss them from time to time. So it's helpful to me if you see something that's an omission, if you would let me know about that. The other thing I'm going to say about the rules is some of you may not like what the rules say. If you don't like what the rules say, I want to talk for a minute about how you should react to that those rules. Uh, of course, we can start with the quote from Buddha. Holding on to anger is like grasping a hot coal with the intent of throwing it at someone else you are the one who gets burned. So if you see what these rules and they upset you or they, they, they aren't what you think they should be, getting upset and angry about them is not going to hurt anybody except yourself. You can be assured that the boards of veterinary medical examiners and the boards of chiropractic examiners are not going to be upset just because you are. Uh, doesn't mean you shouldn't try to make changes, but try to make changes in the right way. Which brings us to the next two quotes. Uh, the pessimist complains about the wind. The optimist expects it to change. The realist adjusts the sails. There are some things you can control. If you're sailing, of course, you can control your sails, but you cannot control the wind. Understand what you can control and influence and use what you can control to get yourself to the right destination. And then lastly, of course, Maya Angelou uh, said, if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Uh, it's not going to do any good to be upset about these rules, whether you like them or not. Uh, they are what the rules are. And these are the rules that you will need to be practicing under as you practice animal chiropractic. So let's start by talking about what are the goals? What are the reasons for having regulations of animal chiropractic in the first place? Why do we limit who can provide care for animals? Uh, generally, the rules are designed to make sure that people providing care for our animals are properly trained and qualified. They also require informed consent, they regulate advertising, and they regulate the quality of care to prevent malpractice and in some cases to require certain types of record keeping. Again, whether you agree with these rules or not, these are what the rules are that you need to follow. So the first goal is to be sure the people caring for our animals are properly trained and qualified. And the key question here is who can provide chiropractic adjustments on animals? The license for veterinarians is a general practice to treat animals. And it generally includes or gives them the, the license to provide any kind of care 
they choose to provide. And as we look at the state regulations, you will see that almost none of the state regulations require any additional training for veterinarians before they provide animal chiropractic care. Now, I think that's a poor rule. I think some additional training, something like the AVCA certification or this class at Parker University, should be required of the veterinarians before they can provide that procedure for their animals. Now, even though the, the regulations may not have anything specific about animal chiropractic, a lot of the veterinary statutes and regulations do have provisions that say veterinarians should not provide care that they haven't been properly trained to provide. And that could get veterinarians who are untrained in trouble if they decide to go ahead and provide animal chiropractic care. Now, the second group we're going to talk about is chiropractors. Now, the chiropractors have the expertise with respect to chiropractic care but they do not have the expertise with respect to treating animals. And the chiropractic license is for treating human patients. Just having a chiropractic license by itself does not qualify someone to provide animal chiropractic care. And even having AVCA certification uh, is not going to be enough to provide chiropractic care without supervision. As we talk about the rules with respect to chiropractors, again, most of the statutes and, and regulations do not spell out any specific training for animal chiropractic. A few states do, but not many. Uh, so because there's no requirement for training, a chiropractor is essentially acting with the same authority as a layperson in treating the animals. Uh, treatment can be provided generally only under the supervision of veterinarians and whether you agree with that or not that is the current state of the rules now in an ideal world the rules should spell out the additional training that veterinarians should receive before providing animal chiropractic the rules should spell out the additional training that chiropractors should receive before providing animal chiropractic and what supervision should be exercised over those chiropractors or should be required for those chiropractors to be working on animals. And of course, for laypersons, what kind of training should they have and what kind of supervision should be provided if they are going to provide chiropractic adjustments. Keep in mind that laypersons may include people who are chiropractic students may include people who have graduated from a chiropractic college but do not yet have a license. It may include persons who have only completed part of the chiropractic program. Those persons are not licensed to treat animals and they should not treat animals unless they're treating the animals under the supervision of a veterinarian. So what happens if you ignore these rules? If a chiropractor, for example, chooses to treat animals and treat animals without the supervision of a veterinarian, the chiropractor is committing the unlicensed practice of veterinary medicine. We'll start with that's a criminal uh, conduct. The chiropractor or layperson practicing without a license uh, may be subject to criminal consequences, including criminal fines and prison time. Now, part of the reason that's important to understand is if that person hopes to get a chiropractic license someday, they may not be able to do so if they have a criminal conviction for unlicensed practice on their record. Uh, short of going after a criminal conviction, the state boards may pursue an injunction or a cease and desist order against the person who is practicing without a license. Chiropractors need to be aware that the veterinary boards tend to be protective of their profession. They do not want somebody competing unfairly with the well-trained veterinarians. And sometimes they're a little overzealous in protecting that competitive turf. Uh, 
And as a result, they tend to be quick to seek injunctions and cease and desist orders. Uh, of course, beyond action by the state board, uh, somebody who is practicing without a license is exposed to civil liability. If a patient is injured or a client is not happy with the care provided, they may sue the provider for malpractice. And if the provider is providing care without a license, it is almost certain that there will be negligence. And the only question will be the value of the damages. Of course, the person practicing without a license may be subject to licensing sanctions. A chiropractor practicing without a license on animals may be subject to sanctions by the chiropractic board. If the chiropractic board becomes aware that the veterinary board has obtained or sought a cease and desist order or has uh, obtained a criminal conviction, the chiropractic board may take licensing sanctions against the chiropractic license. So not only does the chiropractor run the risk of not being able to treat animals in the future, the chiropractor is also running the risk that they won't be able to treat humans with chiropractic in the future as well. It's also important for the veterinarians to be careful that they are providing proper supervision as required by the statutes and the regulations. If a veterinarian is participating in a referral or a, 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 a scheme where they're not providing the proper supervision, the veterinarian can be con uh, accused of and disciplined for aiding an unlicensed person to practice. This Zepecki case out of Arkansas involved that exact situation. The veterinarian referred a dog to a chiropractor for animal chiropractic care. The veterinarian admitted that they were not present to supervise the chiropractor when the animal chiropractic care was provided. Now we'll talk more about the regulations in a minute, but the Arkansas regulation is one of the strictest and generally requires that the veterinarian be present while the unlicensed person, the chiropractor, is providing the animal chiropractic care. Now, when I say unlicensed person, I mean unlicensed to treat animals. Of course, the chiropractor may be licensed to practice chiropractic on humans. The veterinarian also failed to include the chiropractic treatment in their records. And because of that, the veterinarian was disciplined by the Arkansas Veterinary Medical Examining Board and the Court of Appeals in Arkansas uh, upheld that disciplinary action. So because of that, whether you're a chiropractor or a veterinarian, you should understand the rules for delegating and be sure you are following those rules carefully. As a chiropractor, you want to be sure the veterinarian is follow, following those rules properly. Uh, not only to protect yourself, but also to protect the veterinarian. One sure way to end a stream of referrals is to get the vet veterinarian disciplined by their uh, licensing board. So be careful about that. And make sure you understand the consequences of not following the rules. In the next video, we'll talk more about what the rules provide and the kind of supervision that's going to be required.